kill off religion of Sophia. We can get back into John, hopefully. We're going to spend a little bit of time talking about sons of God. Make a decision not based on what everyone else says, but what the Bible says. Who we most likely are talking about when it comes to sons of God. We started Genesis 4. Uh, in 26, Seth, it is Seth, to him also there was born a son, the son he called his name Enos. So, let's we'll, we'll go, we'll, we'll go 25. Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son, called his name Seth. For God, said she, hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. And Seth, to him, also were there was born a son. There was no word there. He called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. Now now we're going through a list of men calling upon the name of the Lord. And it goes this whole list of generations, you know, Enos and Seth, Seth Enos. And, oh, what else is there? Cain, Cain, Cainan and uh, Mahulalel. I think it's already pronounced Mahalalel, whatever. Uh, Jared, uh, Methuselah, uh, Lamech, and some others, Enoch. And leading up to, to, to Noah, then it talks his lineage, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. These are all men they call upon the name of the Lord. What made uh, Noah, if we learn in, in Genesis, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, because he's one of the men who call upon the name of the Lord came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives all of which they chose now automatically everyone says that it has to be uh, angels and it does not automatically have to be that Romans 8 wherever we find the verse of course we, the reason why we're doing this is because John in chapter 1 talks about um, that and it says here now he's talking about men he's talking about men specifically not angels but what happens to men at least during this time period that first century are those people in this story uh, what happens to them right and I, where are we at oh, I'm in Job I need to get to uh, maybe another one of these I didn't want to do that I don't want to open up too many of these KJV online things I'll do, I'll do three because maybe they would make it more functional for me. When we go to John, probably a good idea, anyways, because we're going to end up going to Romans chapter eight somewhere. But um, But it, it, so, so he came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God, even to them that what believed on his name. <clears throat> Romans 8. Sons of God. Let's see. If I forgot my chapter right. Uh, 
think it's A12 or something like that. Let me just go there. This is to help us define what is meant by sons of God in the Bible. And I know we all go automatically go to Job and think that we know what we're talking about. And that it has to be some counsel in heaven, right? By, by the way, an evangelical who I don't believe for a moment. Well, first of all, if you, if you don't believe in what Jesus says when he said he's coming back in his generation, I don't believe you're a Christian. Now, they'll say the same thing about me, but I have the scriptures on my side. They have their religion and their dogma. There's no way you can say that you're a follower of Jesus but and then the same token say that you don't believe what he said. The only things that we have, the only thing to determine what he said are the words and the pages of what we call the, the collection of books called the Bible. That's all we got. That's it. Now you can say, well, God, Jesus spoke to me. Uh, okay. I hope he did. They're still not going to change anything about what's in the words of these pages of this book. In fact, that... Uh, what they say <clears throat> and uh, you know it's not like it's like the greatest thing in the world oh, it's for as many as what's up you reading real last night you ain't watching any more videos tonight chase you got a goal I finished that book by Wednesday <sighs> <laughs> he'll learn to love reading but the only way you're going to learn how to love reading is if you do it if you don't read you'll never learn to love it and it's not just taking it 15 minutes or I'm going to do it for half an hour kind of thing that's not how you learn how to, le le to love how to read you have to sit down and read and uh, so in uh, 14 which, uh, of of eight of Romans, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we call Abba Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness to our spirit that we are the children of God. If children, then heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. If so, be that we suffer with him, that we may uh, also be glorified together. So there's definition of sons of God. As many as are led by the Spirit of God. This is really important to think of what he's saying there. Because he's reflecting off of one particular verse in the Old Testament. That's in Genesis 6. Now, think about what he said. The Spirit of God, the ones that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. We know that Noah was led by the Spirit of God. And we talk from Enos, leading all the way to Lord. No, these are the men called upon the name of the Lord. Right? Uh huh. We do know that. That's what the, the, the Bible says. Whether it's true or not, it's another thing. But that's what the Bible says. And all of the translations say the same thing, one way or the other. So then it goes to here. And this is this, this bogus Hegelian and dialectic uh, argument of uh, it's the sons of Seth or the sons or, or the sons of or, uh, uh, angels, right? But Seth didn't call upon the name of the Lord. Enos did to start out with. Not Seth. So why do they always say Seth instead of Enos? Secondly, because <clears throat> they don't want you to know this. They don't want you to focus on this. So think what he says here. And it came to pass when men, men, began to multiply on the face of the earth, daughters were born unto them. That the sons of God, let's just say that it is actually those descendants 
of Enos, leading out to, to Moses or to uh, Noah, saw the daughters of men were fair, and took them wise all which they chose. Big deal. It goes on today, all time, everywhere, right? Something that always happens. The Lord said, My spirit, what? Shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his day shall be 120 years. Okay, 120 years. Many people feel that's the, the time that Noah had to, to warn humanity. God gave them not 40 years like that they've received in the 40 years of Jacob's trouble in the New Testament leading up to the, the destruction, the second coming, uh, the destruction of the temple and, and Jerusalem and etc. Three times that. All right? This how because obviously this is maybe a, even a bigger, bigger event, if you will, as far as creation goes, right? The flood. So again, three times that. And long suffering to humanity. And the three times that this is and there were giants in the earth in those days. Yeah, I think you can. Well, folks, how close are you? Around like nine knees sometimes. That would be such a great idea, because that would mean then and then tomorrow, if you could get, if you could get another 100, 150 tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Three, three hundred. Then I'm gonna have seventy-five. Left. And then you can accomplish that. You can have it done by Wednesday. We're doing this thing with the library, working together, and reading books. And I, so we got two of them. They were recommended but to me by the librarian. I didn't I've been so stuck on reading the Bible for the past years that I figured I'd get something different. So she she gave me um Haddock's Margaret Peterson Haddock's book, the first book of the series of Among the Hidden. Very prophetic. I read all hundred and fifty three pages of that since last night. And then I'm going to begin reading something that's called Detroit, an American Autopsy by Charlie Lidoff. And I heard some pretty good things about it. Although he's a paid shield journalist, apparently he did a good job in this one, supposedly. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. If it's not any good, then I'll find something else for you. You know. But back to this. Giants. Now, automatically, people think there's got to be, you know, Bigfoot. they got to be, you know, 12 feet tall and all this other crap, right? That's not necessarily so. The giants, are, it, talk, it, it talks about New Testament giants as well. Uh, men of renown, giants. You know, leaders, men. Men like Caesar, Nero, uh, the they had uh, um, a, a chief of priests there in the, the, the Pharisees. He was a, a giant in his culture. I know you don't like to hear that, and we've been brainwashed because we're so... They have really damaged us it's so bad. It's, it's so brutal what they've done to us over the past 150 years, and most of us don't even believe and don't want to accept how bad we have been deceived <laughs> at every level. But if we just say in context... Whether you believe in the book where it says or not, it, it, you'll read through this for all the way through Genesis 6, from Genesis 5 to Genesis 6, Genesis 7, and ain't nothing but angels. Unless you say that one chapter, there were two, two verses, all of a sudden jumped right out of it. And you know, that would be a big damn deal. That would be an amazing bang, damn deal. Because Genesis 1 talks about kinds. And how kinds reproduce themselves. Dogs reproduce, you know, and stuff about whales make whales and, and etc. right? And, and and we learn already, Jesus made it very clear that angels don't reproduce. At least not the way humans do. They don't get married in order to have babies and all that kind of stuff. I don't know exactly how they would go about it. If they do. But it's really irrational and illogical to think that some ethereal being has the capacity to put his dingling in a female vagina and make men or anything else like that. 
but it's really helpful in selling books and especially if the agenda is learning against learning the ends justify the means and burn the water at all costs poison the well throw everything in the sink at people so no one uh, stays focused on what this book's really about because if most people realized that this book had finished in 70 AD they know the spell's over they use this book as, as magic conjuring spells to convince you that the world's going to end that Nephilim are coming back and run all over the place the deception is so deep that many of the people who are deceiving us believe in the deception and there's no way they could break from the spell unless they get honest how do you break from the spell you get honest about what Jesus said and did don't be ashamed of what he said and did next thing you know the words of Paul come alive that the apostles words come alive and this book comes alive <clears throat> so what was this all about issue about leading up to destruction of the world was it because of angels it doesn't say anything about angels it's what it says God saw the wickedness of angels and men that it was great on the earth no it says that man was great in the earth and that every imagination and thoughts of his heart was only evil continually it doesn't say angels and men it says man and it's amazing that what you witness and what I've witnessed and which guys are paid big money call themselves theologians who are masterful and the art of propaganda and the distilling uh, PR uh, information selling in an idea it's amazing how brilliant men are at lying remember every imagination of the, heart, of the, of the thoughts of, the, of his heart was only evil continually money's involved reputations on the line you'll be amazed what people will be willing to do unless you subtract money from the equation in other words what I mean by that is it doesn't mean you can't get some money from somebody someone wants to help you out but if you're doing any of this pursuit for the truth and, and the money comes along and poisons it it will poison you terribly this whether you like it or not whether everybody else wants us to believe it or not, no matter who are our favorite uh, teachers out there that might have taught us about this, that, or the other, they are dead wrong when it comes to Genesis 6, 1, and Genesis 6, 4, that it has anything to do with angels. Be why? Because God would have mentioned it. If God had an issue with angels, uh, he would have mentioned it. Okay, now, now what people will say, well, let's look at Job. And we will look at Job. But let's remember, let's look at what's in context. Paul himself is taking words right out of Genesis. Really, he is. He says, the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man, for he is always flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. That's how long they got before the flood that's the warning he got Romans Paul talking to the Romans Romans 8 <clears throat> and uh, 14 for as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God see the key here the key in all this I thank you, God, for really... You know what, folks? I didn't even know this until... T I didn't really understand what I'm telling you right now until now. Dead serious. The answer to understand Genesis 6, and it's not Job and what they're talking about there. But if you understand Job, Job chapter 1... Verse six and uh, the you know the other verses that talk about I guess two one 
uh, uh, etc. Is first what it's talking about here. I lost. This is how bad the situation is. Derek Hallett and I had a falling out over this. And there was no more real closeness after that. And it wasn't really me. And he'll say it was not him, but I know it was him. And Derek was dishonest of the debate with... Um, he was dishonest of the debate with uh, John Watson and what the Bible says about the immediacy of the message and with when Jesus said the second coming was going to happen in the apostles' generation or not. And he lied when it came to... Um, get out of your fly. Chapter, um, was it? It's Matthew 16. And the last two verses of Matthew 16, I think it's 27, 28, is that what it is? Anyways, instead it has something to do with the transfiguration. So deceitful. So deceitful. Did he mean to do that? I don't know. Has he, if, has, he, has he done anything to correct it yet? No, he hasn't. And then he did this with me, saying that it absolutely had to be that Genesis 6 was about fallen angels. It was not about fallen angels. How do we know that? It's the reversal. It's literally words taken from Genesis 6. You'll find in Romans 8. See, this is the thing. Unless you study this book, and it takes a lot of time, and for many of us, we'll never become theologians. We will get no diplomas, and we'll get no accolades. In fact, we're going to get the shit kicked out of us and kicked out of church. But the fact of the matter is, this is what it is. Romans makes it very clear. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. In Genesis 6, it goes. It, it gets it straight from Genesis 6. It, is, it doesn't talk about angels. And when the Bible says we are like, 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 like unto angels, but we aren't angels. We are not. We are creating God's image, but we're something different. But does that mean in the after this life we have we're something like angels or, or not like angels? Well, the Bible says we're something like angels, like unto angels. But, you know, what does that mean? I don't know because I am not over there. I hope God has enough mercy on me that that will be the case. But it says very clear here. The Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with men, for they are, for he is f also flesh. Yet my his day shall be a hundred and twenty years. And then what? And he talks about then that but there was giants on the earth in those days. Mighty men. And after that when the sons of man God came in unto the daughters of women, and they bare them children, the same became mighty men, which were of old and men of renown. And God saw the wickedness of man's of man. Uh, was great in the earth and that everything of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually he doesn't say one damn thing about angels there's literally not one damn thing about angels folks we have to break the spell now I know they have to say well it's this death and this is that no the Bible says exactly what it says you understand exactly what it says and you will never be able to trust anybody who has motive to buy a just to make money off books especially if there are major pub, uh, publications and periodicals and they and they get grants grant money there's certain things they can only say or cannot say once you go across the line you got problems the fact of the matter is <clears throat> the fact of the matter is it's very clear it just from Romans 8 once again 8, 14 very clear 
that Paul I was taking it straight from Genesis 6 okay and then we go back to John <clears throat> I'm going to get all Job. I don't even know if I'm going to get into Job yet. Now, Job is, might, might be a different situation. Or, if it's in line, or is it really in line with what Paul's saying? What John's saying? What uh, the author of Genesis 6 is saying? Could that possibly be more likely the case? Or is it in line with all the booksellers out there who want you to believe that it's angels? When it never says it once. Now, mind you, you sell more books, and the, it's the story is a hell of a lot more interesting. And if you understand magic and how sorcery is done, some of the best sorcerers out there in the world call themselves Christians. By far, bar none, are some of the best sorcerers out there. The spells and magics that they cast upon the populace is so powerful. That the whole generations, multiple generations, whole cultures will believe on a, a whole dogma, doctrine, theology based on a twisting of a line and a book with such little information. Little to none almost for most things. But Jesus makes it very clear. But as many as receive him, what does that mean? Who's first of all receiving him right now in this book in John? It's not you and I. It's those Jews, those Jews, and the outline heirs and Gentiles, right? Who accept the Messiah, Jesus being the Messiah. That Jesus is going to come back. That the temple's going to be destroyed. That Jerusalem's going to be conquered. They're going to the ones that be the ones that are going to be resurrected. They're going ahead and off to the new Jerusalem. You must understand this. You must accept the truth if you want to really even know God. I always wondered. There was always something off constantly with my me and my fellow brothers. And sisters in Christ. There's always something wrong. I look at the, the lack of grace and mercy that we have towards each other. I can see it right now with my brother towards me, my sister towards me. And I mean, and, and, you know, and, there's, and, and, and everyone's a Christian, right? Everyone's a Christian. Well, I'll tell you, and I've always said, I am an abide, I believe in Jesus, I believe in what he said and did. I don't know what that makes me. My hope is, is you know, uh, John three sixteen, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, whoever would have abiding faith in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Everlasting life. That's what my hope is in. No religion. I've done some. I've done some uh, rites and baptisms. I've been baptized how many times? One, two, three. Hey, four, five times. What's up, buddy? Don't give up, man. Don't give up. Just, Don't give up, man. I'm just going to narrow it down. To that. But make sure, Chase, that you read it. Okay? I mean, get something out of it. So, the thing is, there is absolutely nothing going on here about angels. Do you understand that? Nothing. This is one of the cruelest things that I've seen people that some of them are now deceased, very popular people, even today, evangelicals in particular, who have pulled this trick on people, who call themselves Christians, who think if you have a nice glowing smile and you say some words out of the Bible, that somehow you're a Christian. You aren't a Christian. You never were a Christian. You can't be a Christian. Literally, I'm telling you, the reason it's not, I don't worship this guy, John. And God makes sure there's always something happens. Always. Always something happens. So the first time I get a chance to talk to, not John, Derek, 
Derek Jester. The first time I get a chance to talk to him. And what happens? Oh, there's nothing but echoes on his side. Echo, echo, echo. One damn fucking thing after another that never works out. Why is that? I think part of it might be he was on a cell phone and it does some, there's something that, I don't know, speakers on their end or something. Something's not right. I don't know. Something's not right. Maybe it's me on my end. I don't want to spend all this money to have some software package where I'm going to only interview one person a month. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to do what I used to do. I don't want to be an inter interviewing whore, just interviewing anybody in order to entertain the audience. Don't want to be that person. I'm sharing my journey with you. I did that. Not been there and don't really I really wanted to talk to you Derek because I am studying the Bible know that Derek was being honest about what he's saying and he did a better job of, of sharing it with you in a more concise way than I can although we didn't get to that point because there's this introduction I don't know if we'll ever do shows together but although I want to but I don't know if it's meant to be the fact of the matter is the Bible makes it very clear Genesis 6 and, and, and Romans 8 14 and Genesis 6 was it 3 or whatever the hell it is but we're at 4 whatever uh, 3 I it's so blatantly obvious it's so blatantly obvious along with John first John chapter 1 uh, a verse um I always forget this one. Twelve. You tie them up together and you know it's very clear. It's very clear. Now once you can accept the fact that is um that those who call upon the name of the Lord, that those that follow God, they are the sons of God, right? Those are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Do you understand? That's the definition of Son of God. Changes everything. And and yeah, it's definitely one hundred percent. And it's real close in line with the the whole Seth side of the side of things, right? Because that's really what it is, folks. I know it's not fun, and you go through your phases as a Christian. But you should go through your phases as a Christian and honesty. Honesty is a virtue and a trait that most Christians don't start out with and don't end out with. If you don't get honest with things, and you know what? This is what happens. When the group and the pastor and everyone else puts pressure on you and you've got nothing else but them, you'll cave. If you let go of them and you put your trust in God, whatever that means, and believe me, my journey with my Heavenly Father has not been fun. I feel like I've been hit and ran over by a mat truck a million times in my lifetime. Physically, spiritually, and emotionally. Alright? But what, what's the purpose of this whole thing? I want, the, I want that pearl great price that, 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 that the followers, the disciples, that, that the elect received by honoring Jesus. I want a piece of that. Anybody with the same mind wants a piece of that. I'm not going to lie about what Jesus said. If Jesus was chosen of God, his son of God, and he had a mission to be the Messiah, and arrested him, and had to create, I'll go through all the, 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 the prices that he paid in order to restitute man, and, then, and for once, to have man once again have the potential of having a communion or community or uh, uh, interaction or a relationship with God again what am I supposed to do I'm going to follow Jim I'm going to follow Jesus said he went and he said he came back he was coming back in their generation there ain't a damn thing you can do about it except make a decision either Jesus didn't know what he's talking about or you're smarter than him or he did know what he's talking about and our arrogance and our fear 
of being rejected of the world outweighed his own words. <laughs> that's what it really comes down to. So that's where we'll stop here. This this would be part but B John one, but and I also notice that people are like you know, I just like it's funny how I, there's a growth and there's a die off. There's a growth and there's a die off. And how slow the growth is and how they've been shadow banning us and me and so many other people. I'm not alone with this, but I see it heavily with me. And a total denial of allowing it to have any substantial growth, have any kind of um, subs. And when I do have subs, because of the topic matter that I offer, it's going to piss you off. It should piss you off. It should get you to think. You don't have to like me. Think. 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 The fallen angels, the fallen angels that we know of, the fallen angels are in Genesis, are in Revelation, Revolution, Re Revelation, and it happened in that first century, and it ended in that first century. The evil that we have around here, most of it is men, and then there's evil spirits around here, and there's darkness, and there's always been darkness in this place. There's been day and night, darkness and light. Right? Whatever that darkness was, whatever that evil was, it sure attracted Satan, didn't it? But you remember, Satan's gone. So when you hear a Christian go out there and say, Satan, this is satanic and that's satanic, and I did it for a long time too. And they don't correct themselves down the road? There's something wrong with that person who calls himself a, correct, a Christian. Because Satan's in the lake of fire, folks. If he's not, then Jesus and John and the angels that are talking about this are all liars. And that's not the case if you believe in Jesus. Now, if you don't believe in Jesus, and then you say, oh yeah, Satan's roaming to and fro. Then what are you? A Luciferian? How about a Satanist? If you're a Satanist, you really got to think twice about what, you, what you're doing to yourself. You believe in a spirit that's talked about, and the only reason you know about is from the Bible, a defeated spirit. It's in the lake of fire that's no more. You understand that? He ain't answering your, your prayers. He, he ain't. And in fact, you know what? A lot of us just think twice about what is actually answering our prayers. <clears throat> what is actually answering our prayers? Well, I know one thing. You can't be a Satanist anymore. You can be a Christian in 2022. You can't be a Satanist because you'd have to be part of the Sanhedrin. You'd have to be one of the, the elders, the rulers, the synagogue of Satan. You would have to be Jewish. And you would have to have some kind of high office. You can't be a member of a synagogue of Satan. You can't be a Satanist today. You can make believe. You can pretend you are that. And believe me, there's familiar spirits and everything. But he'll obtain it. And you know what I mean? But let's face it. It's just an opportunity for guys to justify and gals getting the rocks off and having orgies and sex and doing stupid things and killing people. And it's the same thing. It come, you know, they're no different than a lot of people. And it, it's, but here's the Christian thing. If we really believe in Jesus and really understand that he fulfilled all things, then we have no business playing church. Not what we're doing right now. We could honor Heavenly Father. We can honor Jesus Christ. Absolutely. But know what he, we need to honor him for. Right? And this whole thing is the dispensational bullshit and this... Futures and nonsense and historical nonsense. It's all nonsense, folks. It's 100% nonsense. Anybody who studies this, any of this serious stuff, it didn't come, it doesn't come to this conclusion. It's got a lot and so much invested and you can't afford not to be honest about what's going on. Most people just block it all out. They don't want anything to do with it. They move on and they focus on other delusions. But you see, our world of delusions and the foundation really does come out of the words of the scriptures. And if you're not getting honest with those things, the next thing you know, you can lie about anything else. And I don't think God's going to stop it. 
But I think God, I hope, my hope is Heavenly Father will honor our, our attempt, our gesture attempt to be honest with the words, the scriptures. And that the truth will come alive, no matter how it is. And no matter how uh, unsatisfying it may be at the time. And how many may be repulsed from it and argue and bitter and really bicker and fight over it. But it's very clear what it is. It's very clear, folks. Once again, and then I'm going to shut up. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Genesis 6, 3. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with men, for they are flesh. And yet their days shall be 120. What was just the verse ahead of that? That the sons of God uh, uh, saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives, all which they chose. That's what it's all about. And you, you, know, you just you use some common sense. There is no lineage of, of, of angels in this. This is a big deal. I have a hard time believing that there wouldn't be aims of angels involved in this and lineage of angels involved in this and what women and what angels are doing what. I'm sure that God will call them out on it. Now, some people say this is the book of Enoch. Okay. Let's just say those two hundred angels in the book of Enoch. They're no longer around anymore. So what are we really doing with? What are we dealing with today? This is important questions that we are not allowing ourselves to deal with. And we're using our religious dogma and our dogmatic dogma dogma not even something what's the word dog? The, our minds, our indoctrinated minds, to not allow us to get closer to our reality. It's sad. So this is one other thing we know. So what have we learned just with starting with Genesis or John one? John one is an amazing book. Never to start with it. Uh, I, <laughs> I don't agree with that. I think you th th these books were put in order for a reason. That's why there's sixty six books. That's why it ended in sixty six AD. Is uh, it's hidden in plain sight. And. We no longer have sight. I guarantee you, you read Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and you take it to John, you're going to start seeing things that are inconsistent in all of them. We talked about the fact about the Simon Peter and the Jesus, how, how they first meet. There's different accounts that are so diverse, it's ridiculous. Which one is the right one? I mean, this is a big deal. This is Peter. And no, he's not the rock of the church. Jesus makes it very clear the rock of the church is the faith into Jesus who, is, is who he said he said he was. Not that Simon Peter ever started the Roman Catholic Church. God Almighty. Whatever started that, that abomination, good God. That is the Roman church is what that is. Because you and I still live in the Roman Empire. And one version or variance is the other. Maybe not such a glorious one as the ones back then. Maybe even more glorious, depending on how you see things and recognize things. But the Roman Empire never left. Anyways, monarchies never left. Look, the earth looks pretty damn flat. It looks more flat than it's round. Uh, Jesus showed up in 66 AD. The book, uh, Bible, uh, and Christianity ended in 70 AD. That doesn't mean you don't have to have faith in Jesus, nor does it mean you, 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 it's not important to know who Jesus is. Far from it. It's even more important than you realize. Maybe even more important than you even understand. Okay? Bigfoot's real, but it's a spear. It's a tree spear. These called tree, these stick people, stick men. They come out of the freaking trees. People seen it. I've seen it. Millions have seen it. This way, and it's been this way for all time. 
These tree spirits have some connection with the trees. And what else is going on? That's the way the world is. Can't get out of it. It's not going to end unless we wipe out every damn tree there is. And we nuke this place. And then maybe we can get rid of them. We're not getting rid of them. I don't know how they coexisted with them the, the, three generations ago or if, uh, ten generations ago. But we've clearly have, have forgotten just about everything. Who we are, what we're supposed to be, how we're supposed to be living, how we're supposed to be behaving. It's tragic to watch what's going on. There we go. That was John, Chapter 1, Part 2. Sons. The sons of guns. The sons of God. Who? Once again... But as many have received Jesus, to them gave P power to become, become sons of God, even to them that bleed on his name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwell among us, and we behold the glory and the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus Christ. The light of the world. Which is very interesting. The one thing that's really interesting too, in Job is, that I must bring up. Gotta bring it up before I go any further. And that is, when it comes to Jesus talking about in the end of the, the Bible, <coughs> And he says, <clears throat> I am the morning star and the sons of God in this, I want to say as well. Uh, let's just get over to Job. It might, that might be this is the easiest thing to do. Maybe. Nothing's easy. I don't make anything easy. Ah. <sighs> Because what they're saying, and this is going to shock you, most of you don't even know this. And most anybody that paid attention stuck this, stuck out, stuck through this recording. Uh, you're an amazing human being. That's all I got to say. On grace and glory, go to God. That's for sure. For whatever it may be. Where is it? We are the morning stars. Let me take a pause and then uh, I'll come back and find it and I'll finish up this recording with that. So I don't sound this dead air. Okay, so uh, let's get back to here. So the morning star, we know in Revelation, right? That Revelation, Jesus says, at the very end of Revelation. He says that he is the morning star. We'll look at that real fast. <clears throat> Oops. That's the other side. I, Jesus Christ, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches or the assemblies. I am the root and offspring of David, the bright morning star. Not the son of the morning. That is Lucifer. Yeah. You want to hear the most confusing thing ever? What's that? This is. Monsters don't die. First of all, they do. They can be killed, but they don't die. <laughs> oh. There might be some truth to that, actually. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, <clears throat> so, he's talking about the gates of the city, the city's New Jerusalem, which is the heavenly city. And he says, For without our dogs, sorcerers, whoremongers, murderers, idol idolaters, whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. 
Jesus is the morning star, not Lucifer. Lucifer is the son of the morning. Big difference. Okay, very much so. Now let's look at, at, at this. Is, and we'll go here. Who has laid the measures thereof? And and thou knowest. And who has stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the fountain, foundations thereof fastened? Who hath laid the cornerstone thereof? Right? Jesus Christ is the cornerstone? Chief cornerstone? Chief cornerstone. When the morning stars, plural, sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Distinction. We know in the Bible stars and angels, messengers, are synonymous. Well, many times people want to think that there's no such thing as angels and those ethereal beings. I think you're making a terrible mistake, but you do what you want to do. And then maybe I'm wrong, but I doubt that. There are spirit beings, I know that. I've seen them with my own eyes and I've filmed them. So, <clears throat> but they don't look anything like humans. We know in Genesis 6, along with Romans 8, who the sons of God are, along with, 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 along with uh, John, yeah, I, first chapter of John, yeah. Um, just, I'm almost done. Just sit on the couch there. Turn on the light and sit on the couch here. Stay warm. It's warmer in here than it is in there. I'm going to draw or something. Uh, we can't turn on the heat because then I die. It's 77 <laughs> degrees in this room. Yeah. Can't do that. So, and I'm sorry you don't have a sweatshirt. Hey, why don't you wear one of my sweatshirts? There's sweatshirts over there. There's my sweatshirt over there. They might stink, but... And they're big, but they'll keep you warm. Where's my Where's my Ohio State one? Is it there? It doesn't have a hoodie. Mm -hmm. The Ohio State one has a hoodie. So, um, <clears throat> so there you go. So the morning stars, plural, sang together. Jesus says he's the. Jesus says he is the bright morning star. We also learn in John. It's going to be big on you, but it'll keep you warm. Where's the Ohio State one? So anyways, the morning stars. Jesus is the morning star. Job it makes a distinction between the morning stars, pearls sang together. We know that the angel Gabriel came in unto I came in unto Mary just as the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men. And there's nowhere in Genesis where it really says anything about angels outside of um, a serpent to deceive the angel, you know, and Satan in the beginning. But there's nothing there. You can make all of the, everything up you want. And that's all you're doing is making up stuff. We can also, the Job, if we can just accept that there's a distinction between angels and sons of God, then uh, in Genesis 6, or Job 1, 6, and now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Now remember, um, uh, 
and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto them, Whence comest thou? And Satan answered, the Lord said, From going to and fro in the earth, and walking upon and down in it. It doesn't say you. It doesn't say you went up to heaven to do this. And um, he says, Also, when the days of their feasting were gone, this is Job, and he said, Sanctified by then rose up early in the morning and offering bird offerings, offering according to the number of them all. And Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus Job did Job continually. Now there was a day when the sons of God. Now he goes back to now Second Peter. A day is a thousand years and the Lord is a thousand years as a day. Meaning, times is irrelevant to God. That's what it really means. In other words, a day has no, no relevance in God's time. Nor would it have it. And why would it have that? What, 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 why would there be such a thing then in heaven? But if the sons of men gathered together, right? The sons of God gave, gave the, 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 the sons of God gathered together. They would do that, just like they would have the feasts, right? The feast days, like the Passover, etc. Why wouldn't they get together and present themselves before the Lord? And Satan would, of course, that he would be there accusing them. Now, wouldn't they? Between uh, it, you know, I I just don't see anything that definitively says it's, it's an angel. Or their angels. And I don't see that at all. But I do see where the possibilities of distinction between the morning stars, plural, and the sons of God. There is a distinction between there, and Jesus says he's the morning star. Jesus has some kind of, and uh, this angel Gabriel has some kind of connection with each other. Whatever that may be. Some say it's because of the Holy Ghost. It's whatever, whatever. Whatever. Maybe the only way Jesus could have even had the Holy Ghost, along with John, or the powers that have been necessary, and the holiest of holies, holy, 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 ghost, spirit, same thing, folks. How many fathers of spirit? I just want you to think things out. I don't just take things for, for granted. Oh yeah, that's the way it is. There's, remember, in, in Job, and the end of Job, there are the morning stars, plural. And Jesus Christ says he is the morning star. This is after he passes with praise and and. and in the heavenly realms. And this is, so, it sounds like sometime <coughs> right before everything was going to be fulfilled and what his new Jerusalem, his new kingdom would look like. He is the morning star, the cornerstone, the foundation of the world, the light of the world. An angelic. Absolutely 100% righteous being. A pure light of truth. And the sons of men, I mean sons of God, are those who started calling upon the name of the Lord. The same ones that in John, or not John, <coughs> in Romans, Paul says and as many as are led by the spirit of God they are the sons of God
Are they the same thing? Some something's distinctly different. Well, those it's it's clear. Those who call upon the name of the Lord, and those who are led by the Spirit of God, capital G, are the sons of God. And the question then becomes, is there a distinction between angelic beings, which don't look like supposedly like anything like human beings, and um, and humans who call upon the Lord? Anyway, that's enough of that. Just something to think about. There's more than just, in the Bible, there's more than just these morning star. They're the morning stars, plural. And the sons of men. Jesus is the son of the morning star. And that is not the same thing as the son of the morning. Far from it. Far from it. Anyways.